and welcome back to Willow's Notes. In today's video, we will talk about nuclear and cytoplasmic responses. In the last few videos, we talked about reception, we saw different types of receptors, membrane receptors, intracellular receptors, and then we talked about signal transduction. We talked about kinases and second messengers. And today, we finally reached the last stage of signal transduction, which is response. The response may either occur in the nucleus or in the cytoplasm, depending on whether the aim is to regulate the synthesis of a new protein by activating gene expression or to regulate the activity of pre-existing proteins. Let's start with the response in the nucleus. Let's assume that the signal right here is a growth factor. The growth factor binds to the receptor, triggering phosphorylation cascade. We saw all of these in our previous videos. The last kinase enters the nucleus. And in the nucleus, it activates a transcription factor. This transcription factor is already formed. It's in the nucleus, but it's not active. It needs to be activated by the kinase. Once activated, the transcription of a specific gene takes place. Once transcription starts, it means mRNA is synthesized, the mRNA leaves the nucleus, and the ribosomes aid in the translation of mRNA into the specific protein. It's worth mentioning here that sometimes a transcription factor regulates gene expression by turning it off rather than turning it on. Let's take the epinephrine signaling pathway as an example. The epinephrine binds to the receptor on liver cells, triggering a phosphorylation cascade. The last kinase in the series activates the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase that catalyzes the breakdown of glycogen into glucose 1-phosphate. Now, let's talk about the regulation of the response. How are the extent and specificity of the response regulated? First, signaling pathways amplify the response. Let's again stick to the epinephrine example. In the epinephrine signaling pathway, each adenylyl cyclase can convert 100 ATP molecules to cyclic AMP. Each protein kinase can activate 10 other protein kinases. So by the time we reach glycogen phosphorylase, millions of glycogen phosphorylase are activated. Second, the response of a cell is specific to the type of the cell. Epinephrine is released as a response to stress. It's our body's response to danger, what we call fight or flight. For fight or flight, we'll need more energy, more ATP. Hence, we need more glucose. And that's why epinephrine stimulates the breakdown of glycogen in the liver cells. We need glucose to generate ATP. In a fight or flight, the heart needs to beat faster. So epinephrine will signal the heart cells to contract leading to more rapid heartbeat. But how can the same signal lead to different responses? The answer is in the group of proteins that each cell type has. Different kinds of cells have different receptor proteins and relay proteins. For example, in the liver, the liver cells have all the proteins the protein kinase A, phosphorylase kinase, glycogen phosphorylase that are needed to break down glycogen. Whereas in the cells of the heart, in the cardiac cells, the same protein kinase A is present. However, it doesn't activate phosphorylase kinase and so on. It activates the influx of calcium, which eventually leads to the contraction of the cell. This is it for today. This was the last video in the series of cell signaling. There's only one more video, which is a free response question. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.